All right, so these are, as you can see, Kings and Fury uh, Beast DDR5 RAM. And I got this on Amazon for around $44. And it was a good price, so I decided to get it. And one of the main reasons why I also got this type of RAM is because my first PC that uh, I ever owned was actually, well, had actually this type of RAM inside of it as well. So, well, this is the DDR3 version of it, it's DDR5. I mean, back in the day, DDR3 didn't have RGB. So, one of my reasons for actually getting this type of RAM. And you clearly see there's two different generations of uh, DDR RAM because this one has way more pins and you can also see the notch that's uh, a bit different. So, you cannot put in DDR5, DDR3 slots. But this RAM is rated at 5600 mega transfers and we're going to set it to that speed. EVGA uh set 690 motherboard all right let's start uh, as you can see the ram is running uh a bit lower than than the rated speed is running at 4400 mega transfers and it's supposed to be running at 5600 so let me restart the computer go into the bios and change that right now all right and if you press f2 while it's booting up yeah here we are in the bios let's go to memory all right so it's set to automatic right now so what we're gonna do is we're gonna change it to profile one and because that is the rated speed for the RAM. We're gonna be changing the speed to be a bit higher later on, but let's first change it to this. All right, now the RAM is running at the correct speed. Now, before I mess with it any further, uh, in order to change the, the, the RGB, you're gonna need this software. This is the Fury Control uh, software. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the in the video description so you guys can look at it. And um, what's it called? You can change the speed of which the the lights, as you can see, the effect takes place. And you can also change the brightness of the RAM slots. Um, and what's it called? This is very important because if you want to leave your PC on all night, you might want to decide to just turn it off because it it is extremely it is really bright even in the lowest setting. It is still gonna be bright. So I just let you know, but you will find the software in the video description below. So if only one of your RAM slot, no, only one of your RAM sticks appears like this, in order to get the other one to appear, all you need to do is reseat it and then it's going to work normally. All right, just in case you're, you have this issue. And after a quick reseat, you can see that the RAM, it's detecting both sticks now. Yeah, just one of, only one of them is showing up, reseat the RAM and that's going to fix it with no problem. All right, we're here once again, and we're gonna be changing the memory configuration. This time we're gonna set it to manual, and let's set the RAM speed to 6,000. Because you know, 5,600 is an odd number. I mean, it is an even number, it just doesn't seem right. So let's uh, try it like this, and see how well that goes for us. And there you have it, 6,000 mega transfers. 
Right now, uh, now six, you know, six is a good number, but you know, seven is the perfect number. So we're gonna set it to seven thousand mega transfers and see how well the RAM performs at that. All right here once again. All right, let's go with seven thousand. The Bible also states that this that seven is God for number. So let's go with seven thousand and see how this goes. Okay, so as you can see, I was not able to set it at the correct speed. So yeah, the computer refused to boot and you know I finally got it to boot after like five minutes or so. So yeah. Alright, so we're here again. Uh, maybe 7,000 was way too high. That was a bit ambitious of me. Uh, let's go with 6,600. Oh, well, looks like we had the same issue. Uh, so it's way too much. Let's try 200, 6,200. Alright, so it appears that the highest I was able to get it to overclock was 6200. And uh, that's actually not that bad. Considering that this RAM is rated at 5600. Doing those complaints, uh, I was going a bit too high going to, right off the bat to 7000. Uh, you're supposed to uh, slowly uh, go up, but uh, I just went overboard with it. So yeah, you should slowly go, go up and increase the the what's it called the speed of it but now let's try the cpu All right so this is the cp this is my cpu the 12100f it's an i3 uh cpu and this is the current temperature now i am using the stock cooler that's probably why this temperature is a bit high but uh let's uh change this let's increase it by uh, by Let's make it 4,500 megahertz or 4.5. And let's see how well that goes for us. Now, I mm, I did previously, uh, what's it called, overclock my CPU to 4.5 gigahertz. And the temperature, as you can see right here, for it, um, you can see the temperature right now is 37 degrees, but it was getting towards 50 degrees because I'm using the stock cooler on it. So I reduced it back to the to the to the stock one because I'm I don't wanna I don't wanna push the CPU. Not right now, especially since I can't get another one right now. So yeah. So the highest I was able to get the, the RAM was sixty two hundred mega transfers. Uh, anything higher would not boot. And the highest I overclocked my CPU was to four point five. And I'm not gonna overclock my CPU any higher because I don't have the cooling for it. And I really don't want to mess up the CPU and shorten its lifetime. So this is going to be the end of this video. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below.